when it comes to what we've identified as sequelitis, I've become rather jaded to the whole idea of sequels in the gaming industry. After finishing The Last of Us for the first time on my own live stream, I outspokenly said, I really enjoyed this and would be a little upset if a sequel ever comes up. Of course, nearly four years later, lo and behold, a sequel was announced, and you can imagine my reaction. Granted, I still fully intend to play it when it comes out, I won't lie. Fast forward a couple years later and the rumblings of a new Devil May Cry start circulating around. This was around the same time that I had a chat with the voice of Dante himself, Ruben Langdon, in an interview that you can find on my channel, which he denied any knowledge of the game's existence. Which is what you'd expect at the end of the day, even if he did know. But it wasn't until E3 of 2018 when Hideaki Itsuno himself walked out on stage at Microsoft's press conference and shouted, DMC is back, that it really sunk in for me. I was conflicted, as someone who enjoyed Ninja Theory's reimagining of the series, but hated Dante's redesign, I fully expected Capcom to continue down this road of this new reboot. And part of me was definitely curious about where that particular story would go next, but the other part of me was excited to see that the original team since Devil May Cry 3 and 4 were back at it and fully confident that taking the series back to what it was before was the way to go. Perhaps this confidence was boosted after the success of both Monster Hunter World and the Resident Evil 2 remake. My time with Devil May Cry 5 was a mix of nostalgia and pure gaming bliss. I found myself fully embracing the level of over-the-top campiness that the series has been known for since the early 2000s. Yeah, he's a real pro at tracking demons around. That's why I built him that well-functioning arm <laughs> to kick demon ass. <laughs> Watch the merchandise! Hey, stop bitching and take cover! But they somehow managed to ratchet this up to 11 by letting you take control of not just one, but three different characters. Nero, the protagonist who made his debut in Devil May Cry 4, Dante, the series' lead protagonist, and a newcomer who calls himself V and also adds a completely new dynamic to the series' stable hack-and-slash gameplay. But the developers didn't just recycle what you've come to expect out of these characters in terms of how they play. Each character has new mechanics attached to them to open up new levels of creativity, of taking down foes with beautifully flashy combos that give even Bayonetta a run for its money. Nero's demon arm has been replaced with a new customizable prosthetic arm system. Each equipable arm has its own unique quirk that changes the dynamic flow of combat for Nero. Anything from a rocket arm that Nero can also ride upon to add some extra flair to your combos and quickly build up that stylish meter, as well as a grappling hook that allows him to bring enemies in from a distance, DMC4 Devilbringer style. They even take this a step further by giving each arm an ultimate attack that can be charged and unleashed. <laughs> Destroying the arm and having Nero replace it with the next arm in the roster. V is probably the most unique of the trio as his design can be related to a Beastmaster. He summons familiars to do his fighting for him while he hangs back and even reads poetry if you want him to. The angel that presided on my birth said little creature formed of joy and mirth go love without the help of anything on earth. However, you're not just doing it for the fun of it. Reading from his book actually builds up Devil Trigger Gauge. And enemies aren't exactly killed from his familiars. V is required to deliver their final blow to weaken enemies himself to finish the job. No escape. It's a stark change of pace compared to Nero and Dante and definitely experimental, 
even if it's not quite as involved or as rewarding as the other two characters. You can still control and even command what types of attacks the familiars can do, but for the most part, just powering them up and letting them have at it on their own is enough to get the job done. Unless, of course, you're playing on higher difficulties. Dante is everything you'd expect from Devil May Cry 3 and 4, but with a few new tools under his belt and a couple of returning ones as well. The style system makes a return and allows you to change out styles on the fly in the same vein as Devil May Cry 4. This coupled with a few new weapons and abilities such as a motorcycle that doubles as a pair of chainsaws or a hat that allows him to use red orb currency as a weapon. The more orbs you spend for attacks, the more powerful the attacks become. This makes for some pretty interesting combinations during combat, and you can best be sure that it's every bit as flashy and stylish that you'd expect from our now haggard demon hunter. New to the series is what I like to refer to as parallel multiplayer. Throughout the game's story, there are moments in which the trio's objectives have them run into each other, and in some cases work together to reach a goal. This translates into an experience where two or three players may find themselves in the same area as different characters, but can actually see each other moving through the environment, fighting demons, or solving puzzles. In a couple of cases, players may find themselves thrown into the same combat arena, which translates into actual cooperative play, albeit rather brief. Players can then raid each other at the end of each mission based on how stylish they think the other player was during combat. You're granted a reward if you're actually acknowledged as such. It's an interesting experiment, but it's one that I can safely say has little to no impact on the game whatsoever. If another player isn't controlling a character at the time, they are simply replaced with an AI that can get the job done just as easily. I would like to see them expand on this in a non-intrusive way in future games. The game story is everything you'd expect from a Devil May Cry story. It's a cheesy action romp with some entertaining and comedic moments thrown in from time to time. Perfect timing. Now we're starting to act like a team. Ew. You like flirting with me? Knock it off. Get in the car. Oh my god. <clears throat> with an antagonist that may as well be wearing a name tag over his head stating what his true identity and goal is. The game's narrative does little in the way of allowing the player to think about what's going on or even try to subvert a few expectations. But let's be real here, if you've been with the series since day one, story is the lowest rung of what you're coming to it for. It's the combat that brings you back every single time. Combat is where Devil May Cry 5 truly shines. Stylish combos are the name of the game and with a rather complex list of abilities and combos that can be mixed up. It becomes all about your own creativity and earning stylish points and receiving the coveted Triple S rank. Enemies are receptive to attacks in a way that makes each hit incredibly satisfying and provides the kind of feedback a combo-focused player needs to experiment with all the tools at their disposal. While the combo list still pales in comparison to Bayonetta, the possibilities are nearly endless, barring V who, while still can hold his own in terms of style and combat, I found myself wanting the enemy to just die so that I could move on to the characters that I actually wanted to play. At the end of the day, Devil May Cry 5 is a fantastic entry to the series that not only continues the legacy, but revitalizes it in ways I didn't think were possible after 3. Hell, even the developers thought they wouldn't be able to top themselves after the third game, which is what contributed to them attempting to reboot the series and start fresh. By the end of the game, I found myself eagerly awaiting what happens next, or even where the story goes next. Did I forget to mention how gorgeous this game is? Capcom has found a way to take an engine that they developed for Resident Evil and expand its potential to even more fast-paced and action-oriented games. Character faces are lifelike, similar to that of their RE2 remake, and the expressions that come with them during moments of emotion are top-notch. It does add a level of impact to storytelling even if the dialogue is questionable at times. Some would argue that this has become part of the series' charm over the years, and I'm inclined to agree. Devil May Cry 5 has managed to give a rejuvenating shot in the arm to a series once thought long forgotten, 
and has managed to open my mindset into giving Capcom another chance. Whatever this new Capcom is, I like it. Keep doing this. Also, don't screw up the RE3 remake. Devil May Cry 5's return to form has earned its place as my game of the year of 2019.